Well, good evening, everybody. So it's been a few months since I've had my portable power station build completed. And I've already had to go through and make a few changes. Some of the things on the station just were not working exactly how they were supposed to or how I expected them to. So I want to go over some of those changes that I had to make in order to make it a little bit more usable for me. So let's get started. So I ended up having to yank out my, my old D-Rock bi-directional current meter, which included the call -out meter as well as the relay that I was testing out. And the reason I had to yank all this stuff out was because the display kept losing its settings. And then it was just getting all out of whack. It would not maintain accurate settings. It seems like every few days I'd have to go back through and readjust voltages. And then if it ended up discharging way too low, the way I had things configured, because it was all being controlled off of a relay, I actually had my DC charger on the opposite side of the relay. And so when the meter died, the relay would remain closed, which then meant that I couldn't charge the batteries back up because I had it all wired backwards. So yeah, I ended up having to, to yank this all out. And I know that I had mentioned in the past that you know, this was, it was really a test. And if it wasn't going to work out, I was going to switch over to the JK BMS display. And this is their four inch display. I want to say it was $35. The display really gives you a lot of the important information that you would really want to see. I mean, you've got your Delta, you've got your MOSFET temperatures, your BMS temperature, and then you've got your average voltages, and then you can see if your balance, your charge, and your discharge is turned on. And obviously you've got your voltage across the top and then your current discharge and your current state of charge. And then across the bottom, we've got a few tabs here. We could switch to the cell voltage tab and this display actually works for up to 28 cells, it looks like. I only have it on my pack of four, but you can see here, it'll show you your different individual cell voltages. And then if you have any alarms, it'll show on here. Now, it is a very basic display. I really wish that it had some built-in controls on here for turning the charging on and off, turning your discharge on and off, and then you're balancing. This is purely for display only. And so taking a peek on the inside, we've got the display down here. So the power switch is actually wired into the display and then it runs back over to the BMS. I did add an a &L fuse so that I had some kind of overcurrent protection off of the battery. And then the column meter was removed from down in there directly beneath this ground pin, if you can see it. So that bundle of cables right there is coming from the display. But other than that, everything's been working fine. Once I got this, this new display installed, I haven't had any problems with things shutting down. I had to make some adjustments in the BMS for, you know, low voltage and high voltage because I wanted to leave some room. Now that the BMS is doing all the protecting, basically, you know, in the past, this meter was doing all the protecting and then the BMS was kind of like a safety net. But now the safety net is gone. So the BMS is doing double duty of, you know, the, the checking and the safety net. So I'm disappointed that, you know, the relay and the meter wouldn't work. With, with some of the fits that I had with this meter, you know, I can't really recommend it anymore. I'll have to pull it off of my website because, I mean, if it, if it can't maintain its values, and it seems like 
Anytime it sat for a significant amount of time, that's when values started really getting out of whack. I tried reaching out to support from DRock, and initially they were kinda helpful, but after some back and forth, they just kind of stopped responding. So, it's a great idea. I mean, I would have loved to have been able to continue to utilize the relay. Obviously, like I said, I would have to do some, some rewiring because in the event that I did have a low voltage disconnect or something, I need to be able to connect my charger on the opposite side of this relay. But, it wasn't the relay that I had problems with. Oh, you know what? That's the other problem that I was having with this. So not only was this losing its settings, but this controlled the relay. Now if I press this button, it should turn the relay on, which we hear the click. On, off, on, off. And then you would program in thresholds that, you know, if you went over voltage or over current or under voltage, under uh, capacity, then the relay could close. Well, the problem is the relay would close on its own at random times. I mean, I couldn't get it to stay open for more than 10 minutes. So if I'm trying to recharge anything, if I'm, if when I had it hooked up to solar, you know, it'd be a beautiful sunny day, I'd get it all set up and I'd have it charging and I'd come back like two hours later only to find out that it barely charged anything because the relay just randomly closed. And you may stop and think, okay, well maybe the relay closed because, you know, it hit one of those protection features. Well, I turned off all the protection features and it was still closing at random times. I could not find any pattern to why it would just randomly turn off. I initially had thought, well, maybe it was because of how I had wired the power supply for the column meter and the relay. And so I went in and I actually rewired it a little bit to supply dedicated power to the relay. And it, it still wasn't working. I followed every step in the manual, and the manual is, is significantly lacking. We'll, we'll put it like that. You know, I'm disappointed that it didn't work. I would rather have, you know, that, that double layer of protection in place. And maybe at some point I'll, I'll investigate other options. But what can you expect for a... Even this might have only been 30-some dollars. But for the time being... Having this display on here and using the BMS to control everything works fine. Uh, I've been using this primarily to test other power stations. <laughs> um, this has kind of been my, my dump load where I would discharge power into and then I would recharge power stations from this as well. So it's gotten quite a bit of use, which is great. And it also means that I haven't had to move it from the utility room very much because I'm doing a lot of my testing down here. Now, a couple of things that I don't like about this display. Uh, unfortunately, it seems that this display is new enough that the BMS that I'm using doesn't actually have any software controls for this display. And you say, well, what do you mean by that? So in the app for the JKBMS, there is a controls section, which gives you a bunch of toggle switches to kind of turn on, you know, balancing, turn on charging, turn on discharge. And apparently on the newer BMSs, there is an option. I don't, I think it's called smart display. And what that does is this display will turn off after a certain period of time of, of inactivity. Well, right now, Unfortunately, this display stays on as long as the BMS is turned on. So I found myself using the power button quite a bit to just shut down the BMS when I know that I'm not gonna be using the battery at all. It takes a minute or two for it to turn on because for some reason these JK BMSs, at least this 4S version that I have, it has a hard time waking up. I mean, I guess it's kind of like me in the morning. You know, when you, when you have to wake up, you're groggy and grouchy and until you can finally you know open your eyes and 
get that cup of coffee in you, you're not really ready to wake up yet. So let me show you what I was talking about. So if I turn the BMS off, and there we go, everything's shut down, everything's drained out. So if I wanna start this thing, press the button, and you hear the beep, you see the display start to light up. Oh, see, now it makes me a liar. <laughs> That was the first time that it actually started back up right away. Normally it goes through this three beeps and then two second pause and then three beeps and then two second pause. And it does that cycle, that startup cycle like seven or eight times. One other thing that I forgot about this display is there was no way to easily mount the display in the case. There's there's no screw holes, there's no mounting bracket, no nothing. I ended up having to take a few dabs of JB Weld and put them on each corner and then slide it in place and hold it so that it would actually get, you know, affixed to the case. So I don't know why there wasn't any mounting brackets or anything or even, you know, you got the little little tabs or something on on this display that you could lock it in place with, but I mean, all in all, I'm, I'm happy with it now. Everything is working the way it should be. I can see, you know, easily without having to open up my phone and open up the BMS app, I can see the basic information that I would like to see at a glance regarding the cells in this pack. So just a short, quick little update on, you know, my portable power station. It's still getting plenty of use now, especially now that I've got some of these little bugs taken care of. I might end up trying to figure out a way to wire in even a physical switch to the power line going to this display so that I could just flip that and actually, you know, kill the power to the display instead of having to kill the entire BMS. But, you know, we'll see. For now, it works. And, you know, aside from having to take you know, a minute or two for it to sometimes wake up, it works well. So with that, I'm gonna let y'all go. Uh, y'all stay safe, stay warm, and we'll catch up with you later.